Uh, hi, this is Dan Hill. Um, so what, what kind of incentive are, are you talking about? You're running for assembly, so I'm going to go ahead and throw that back on you. What, All right. What would you like? What would you like to do to incentivize sure. the uh, the uh, gaming in and all the other tour, the, the entire tourist industry to bring more tourists to financially incentivize them? How sure. would you? What what kind of thing? Just just off the cuff, what what kind of thing would you come up with to be able to bring to Carson City? Um, well, I think. Um Getting all of our folks on board with the new, uh, the, on, the, on the national level, uh, we created this kind of board to push America overseas. Um, and that's going to be paid for, I think, by an extra $10 for international tourists who come into America. I think latching onto that national effort uh, to tap into more of the international market, uh, especially when we're looking at uh, gaming is now opening up in Philadelphia, it's opening up in Florida. Uh, you have Macau and a lot of international gaming. Uh, I think uh, t uh, using this new national program to our advantage um, by either contributing or buying the kind of ad space that they're going to be looking at uh, to tap more into the international market to make sure that Macau, uh, Atlantic City, Philadelphia, Florida, who are seeing the value that can come from gaming, uh, to make sure that, that the, the international clients keep coming to Las Vegas. So what you're saying is that it would not only behoove the state, it would ultimately be very, very financially responsible, fiscally responsible, same thing, to beat out everybody else because everybody else has gaming now. So marketing dollars to get them to come to Vegas right. would be better. I mean, you have to fly over a lot of other gaming venues to come here. Uh, so to paint ourselves as really what we are, I mean, the world class a gaming community. It's a Super Bowl game. That's right. Do you want to add anything? Or? Good to go? Nope, those are all good ideas too. And if I'm elected, I'll steal them. <laughs> <laughs> I had a question. Uh, I'm a firearms trainer. That's what I do, is teach people how to shoot and you know, do instruction and that kind of thing. Concealed carry is a big thing in Nevada. Concealed carry has spread across the nation. I think it's up to close to 40 states now that have some kind of concealed carry law or even more. One of the things that I see, because now Nevada doesn't recognize Florida as their concealed carry permits, Florida, Nevada doesn't recognize Utah. They're right across the freaking border. There have been suggestions. I, I see it on the gun blogs. I hear it from, I've, I've, had, I've had one guy that came from Virginia to get a Nevada permit. And I've had other people tell me, I'm never coming back to that state again. How about letting Nevada recognize all the concealed carry permits from everywhere in the country, rather than letting the chiefs and sheriffs or the DPS or whoever it is decide, no, because Florida has a seven-year permit and ours is only five. <coughs> I'd just like to know what you think about that kind of thing. It would bring more revenue. Oh, absolutely. This is Aaron Leo. Absolutely, we should recognize all the concealed carry permits from all the states. And we should also make sure that we protect our right to open carry. Yeah, there is not a mistake. Well, that's something that we should work on. This is Dan Hill. Uh, I agree again. I mean, it, it makes sense, it makes business sense, it makes uh, constitutional sense, and, and uh, with this new shooting park, uh, that's just another avenue and another area of commerce where we're kind of getting up there with this, a world-class shooting park. Uh, Certainly, it makes sense to make it as easy as possible for people to come and take advantage of it. Where are you done? Um, relationships need to be built with the <laughs> sorry, <laughs> with the legislature and the people. And how are you going to build these relationships? What are some of your ideas? Sure. This is Dan. Uh, I think uh, when, when you get right down to it, there's not a whole lot of innovative ways to do it. And I think the the simple way to do it would be the town halls over the last year have swept America as something that have been a very effective way to uh, to give uh, people a voice. I mean, I've seen politicians in the last six months stand behind a podium for literally four or five, six hours until everyone was, was done speaking. When Senator Ensign had his town halls in Summerlin, he, uh, there were so many people who couldn't get in, he just stayed and had another one, let the next uh, crowd come in. Not that, uh, 
the assembly is uh, something as exciting as people love to meet their assemblymen and <laughs> come here about that. Which is unfortunate because the assembly is the ones who, who decide the income tax, uh, which we don't have. Uh, the property tax rates, the, any business tax, I mean, all of this sort of thing is decided by these 42 guys up there in Carson City. Uh, so I think uh, I would, uh, if there was a, a demand for town halls, I mean, uh, like I said, I think uh, the recent survey said 13% of people in Nevada know who their assemblyman is. And I think that's a problem. Uh, so they should definitely be, uh, as, as much as they can, you know, we got to be in their faces. Uh, because uh, when you get right down to it, we're supposed to be doing their bidding. Uh, I've, heard, I've heard politicians be accused of just doing what the people want <laughs> as, a, as an epithet. And that's exactly what they're supposed to be doing. Uh, and then, of course, you have things like Facebook, uh, which allows people to communicate um, that way. There are only 30,000 people in 29. Uh, I feel like it wouldn't be impossible to communicate with them in between legislative sessions uh, on walking, maybe not just to campaign, but to actually say hello and, and see what's on their mind. Hi, this is Erin Lyle. Well, I plan to be as available after I'm elected as I am right now. And if you would like to be my friend on MySpace or Facebook or LinkedIn or any of those sites, just uh, come right to me. And I was, I'm still going to be the same person I am after I'm elected. If you've ever seen my blog, you see that I, I'm, uh, I'm available all the time. I write something, you want to comment on it? Just comment on it, I'll write back to you. And of course, I, uh, I'm not. Uh, I'm, I'm not only on the internet. I'm, you know, obviously we both live in 29, and this is a, this is actually a fairly small area. It's not like the, you know, on the whole state of Nevada. Um, these are all our neighbors. You know, I'm, I know a lot of the people who live in 29. Um, a couple of hundred of uh, my neighbors are going to be at my house in a couple of weeks. Um, you know, I'm going to be doing. I'm going to be continuing to to do events like that uh, after I'm elected. Also, thank you. Well, I'd like to uh, let you guys know um, there is nobody that RSVP for 34 or 37. So if you want to uh, do some soapbox stuff and have us keep asking you, uh, you know, spitfire questions over to you, uh, we can continue on doing that. Um, so we got. 30 minutes if you guys want to keep going. Come in with me. Well, <clears throat> um, I don't think I'll need 30 minutes to decide. Um, I think you're both pretty good candidates. Uh, I, I've heard you both talk, and there is a lot of comparison here, and, and I would like to give you both an opportunity again to separate yourselves. And also, Aaron, I would like to give you an opportunity to see maybe if you want to kind of rephrase one of the first questions that was asked of you. And that is, if there was something in your party that maybe you didn't uh, agree with, would you go ahead and go along with the program? I mean, because you said, I agree with everything. Well, what happens tomorrow if they get up and they, 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 they have something on their platform that you don't agree? Are you going to go ahead and, and, and vote because that's your party? Or are you going to do what Dan said is that, hey, look, I agree with most everything in my party too. But if they were to come up with, for an example, he came up with his example and said, I couldn't go along with the program. So I just wanted to clarify that I hear you right that no matter what your party does, you always agree or what? Oh, it's more it's more a matter of my party and I um, have been sticking to first principles for a very long time, and I trust them to continue to stick to first principles. The first principles being um, smaller government, lower taxes, more freedom. Um, I don't believe I have ever seen them endorse. Uh, program that would create a bigger government or less freedom, and I don't anticipate that they would do that in the future. Now, when when I look at any issue, I'm always thinking of first principles. If I haven't made up my mind on an issue and I hear about it, what I think to myself is, what is it about that issue that I could do to have a smaller, more responsible government, more fiscal responsibility, more freedom, uh, sticking to the Constitution. And that always tells me the right answer.